All right, guys. Uh, in this platform, I want us to check uh, this part of the 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 traction, which is the rail uh, and road traction, uh, which is actually this this part and the part of the flywheel. That's why you see also on the flywheel. I did not mention much about that. That is your engineering science. So if you're someone who have been under our classes for science, then you'll see that most of the things just a repetition, our angular motion dynamics combined together. But we're just going to talk about one or two things that are important in our mechanotechnics N5. So this is what we have uh, as in depth study of the following definitions should be done before we look at this section, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration, Talk of all this, which is your engineering science. So that's why I was saying, guys, just go back to your engineering science and to N, uh, N3 and N4. Just go and check. I talked about all those things, but we shall mention as we are answering our questions and so forth. All right. So this is uh, what we're going to talk about when a vehicle travels along a road or a track. The only force required for motion is called the tractive force, which is TA. That is the only difference that we are now presenting our forces. All right, this time we're going to use TA to represent the tractive force, the one that allows it to be in motion. That is the only force that we're going to talk about. But they are forces that will tend to oppose this. That is, talk about the frictional force. This and that they are tending to oppose. So in our syllabus, we are going to be mentioning or talking about the three forces that tend to oppose the object to be moving, motion to be moving, was supposed to be moving, but it is being opposed one by the rolling resistance, which is the tractive resistance. So this is on a condition when you are dealing on level ground, let's say you are on level ground, then you are given a condition where the object is supposed to be going another side, then it is being opposed to stop on the other side. That is the idea that is happening on the uh, rolling resistance. So the rolling resistance is simply given by the mass times the rolling resistance. What does it mean? All right, so what does it mean here? Well, what are we saying? All right, this is the mass, which is, uh, if we are given this R here, they can give us R as, uh, given in newton per per ton. Remember the mass measured in ton, so it's going to be the mass in ton times the newton per ton like this. So this one and this one cancels. You are left with what? The newton. So that means we're going to have our units there in what? In newton. So this is what you just need to understand. The mass measured in tons, and this is in newton per per ton. So if this is kilogram, this will be newton per kilogram. This is what you just need to, to understand. Uh, this is your rolling resistance. So the rolling resistance R is normally given newton per, per ton, all right, of, uh, of the total vehicle's mass. All right, then we have got a condition when you move on to the incline, when you are given an incline, we have got the incline resistance, which is Fg. So this is only affecting when you are given an incline. Just like what we, this is what I'm saying. There's this is our science entry. All right. Remember from our engineering science, we were talking about a body. When if a body is going up, we're going to have the total force. But now we are no longer having the total force. We are now having uh, the tractive force, which is the tractive effort. Then we've got the parallel component. That parallel component is your incline force, which is your FG. So your FG is equal to the parallel component. Remember your parallel component uh, from our engineering science, it's mg, the sine of theta. So this is your fg. So fg is given by uh, fg is given by mg sine of theta. So this is what you're gonna have uh, for m uh, for fg, which is the one that is opposing when we are going up. All right. So this is what you are given here. Uh, fg is equal to mg times the sine of theta. This and that. All right. So remember that when you are dealing with an incline, this is it now. For an incline, remember, you will be given at an angle of theta. So this is what I want you to understand about the theta. If you are given the theta is fine, you just have to substitute. Maybe your theta is 20 degrees, it's fine. But you might be given a condition where they give you 
uh, the ratio of one, uh, maybe A in uh, A in B, which is one in two or one in 20 or one in 30, whatever condition that they might give you one in 30 or one in 40. This is the ratio that belongs to the turn of theta, like one 20. So it is the ratio of the turn of theta. Remember, this is a right angle triangle. So it follows that the turn of theta is equal to one over 20. The turn of theta is equal to one over 31 in 31 over 30. But now it also follows that in our mathematical calculation, I say this in our science for that, when theta is small, when theta is small, they are called small languages. Only that, I don't know how, how do we don't have this in our N4 because they were supposed to have this in N4 or even in N5 in mathematics. We're supposed to talk about small angles. We never talked about small angles, but we are supposed to know this idea about the small angles. When theta is a small angle, it follows that the sine of theta approximate to the turn of theta for all small angles. And small angles, they talk about angles such as less than 10 degrees, but in terms of ratio, all ratios, so we are simply saying all ratios are less than one over 10. All ratios that are less than one over 10, we can use this ratio, this approximation, it is considered as small. All ratios less than one over 10, remember one over 10 is a decimal is 0, 0,1. So you can compare by using a decimal to say is 0, 0,005 less than 0, 0,1. Yes, so it means it's a small angle. When you have that in place of the sine theta, you can use it as the turn of theta. So meaning to say, if we are saying the turn of theta is one over 20, it means also the sine of theta, you use it as one over 20. So where there's a sine of theta like this, you're going to use one over 20. Provided that our ratio is less than one over 10, like I mentioned here. It is less than 0, 0,1. So there are so many things that you just need to understand. So this is what you are given here. Uh, when you are given this part, uh, they are saying if a vehicle with a mass of 10 ton, all right? So the vehicle ascends an incline of one in 40. So it's an incline of one in 40. That is one over 40, one in 40, like what you can see here, one in, in 40. So compare one in 40 and one over 10. Remember one over 10 as a decimal, it's 0, 0,1. So we are going to compare with one in 40 and C. We are supposed to compare this. All right, please, where is my calculator? Where is my calculator? All right, I'm just going to need a calculator here so that I just show you something, guys. So that is, Meccano, it's all about the formulas. If you just know the formulas, you're done. So you just need to write down the formulas as you are understanding this class, write down the formulas. That's Meccano techniques. We saw that from Meccano 4. It was the same, even up to Meccano 6. It is just formulas, all formulas, everywhere, formulas. All right, no problem. So this is my calculator here. All right, I want the calculator, guys. Why is it the calculator is off? It's off. Is it possible for a calculator to be off? Oh, now it's on, but there are two. All right, no problem. Sorry for that, guys. So this is one over 40. We want to compare one over 40 and one over 10. So this is 0, 0.025, uh, 0 0.025. So as we can see, guys, 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.025 is less than 0 0.1, 0 0.1. That's, that's, there's a zero there. This one is less than, so that means we are talking about what? A small angle. So if this is small, what did I say? The tan and the sine of theta, they approximated to be the same. So we're going to approximate that the sine of theta approximates to the tan of theta. Why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about this? All right, the question here is that uh, we are considering, remember we are talking about what? Uh, this formula FG for our component that is uh, parallel to the plan, that is FG. We are supposed to be going up, as you can see the good illustration here, we are going up, but this is opposing down. So the FG, like I said, this is your F parallel from your M3 engineering science, which is MG sine of theta. So the mass 
which is one ton. Remember, you're given the mass there, which is of what? Uh, 10 ton. So that is 10 times 1,000 to convert to kilograms. One ton is equivalent to 1,000 kilograms. So remember this also from our engineering science. All right, so there we have converted to kilograms. The G, 9,81 times. Here now, this one. Instead of saying the tan of theta, which is 1 over 40, we are using this as the sine of theta because we said it's an approximation when theta is what? When theta is small. So you're going to use 1 over 40 like that. So that is the idea there. So if you do it like this, the answer that you're going to get and the one that was used when you calculate the theta for, for, for the angle, you are simply going to find a, a smaller difference and that difference is considered neglectable. That is, it is what? Neglectable. You are not going to consider that as a difference. It's not considered. All right. So guys, you need to know your formulas, uh, the most important part. All right. Also this part, you need to understand these formulas again. All right. The other, the last one is when it is an accelerating force. Remember I said there are three resistances that we're going to talk about. So the other one is FA. So this one is used whenever there's a what? An acceleration. Whenever there's an acceleration, we are going to know that there's FA. All right? So this is the force available to accelerate or decelerate the vehicle and X against the direction of motion. So if we are going this direction, the acceleration, it opposes the other way. And this is the idea there. So if we are given on level ground, like on this one, it is on level ground, uh, and maybe we are accelerating this side. So this means our tractive effort is this one. What is going to oppose the tractive effort? Remember, I said there are two things. We are going to have the rolling resistance and also the accelerating when it is considered. So the forces to the left and those ones to the right, they are supposed to be equal. So what we can conclude from this diagram is that TE is equal to TR plus T uh, plus, uh, sorry, this is FR. Uh, this is now F, FR plus FA. This is what you can conclude. So you can manipulate this to find whatever that you want that is on level track. FA is equal to TE minus FR. It's a formula that you can generate from there. But when it is ascending an incline, okay, I think we've got something for an incline here. I want us to see, when we are now ascending an incline, ascending means you are going up. This is ascending, going up. TE is the tractive uh, effort. That is the one that is going up. That is allowing this object to move up. But it's going to be opposed. Remember, whenever there's an incline, we must have the force due to the incline, which is our parallel force, which is FG. So we are going to have three forces, which is our FR, the rolling resistance affecting the one of the incline and the accelerating these three, they are going to oppose this. So it means TE is equal to the sum of these three, FR plus FG plus FA. That is what it means. So we can manipulate this in favor of whatever that you want. This is the formula. So if you check, this is the formula that they are saying, but they wrote in terms of uh, FA. So you can have FA as the subject, but this is the idea when you are going up the incline. Meaning to say, what if you are going down the incline? This is going to oppose now. If you are going down the incline, this is going to be your tractive effort. But always the, 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 the incline force, the incline is always this side. Your FG is always this side. So meaning this time we're going to have the effort, the tractive effort, but we're going to have the forces opposing, which is our rolling and our accelerating force, these ones, they oppose. So FR and FA oppose this one, always. So what it means is that formulating an equation, it means our tractive effort plus our incline force, which is in this case, should be equal to these ones that are on the right, which is FR plus FA. So if I want FA, I'm gonna be left with TE, plus FG minus FR is equal to FA, which is the accelerating force. And we talked about this, that the accelerating force is equal to mass times what? Acceleration. So you can also calculate acceleration from there. 
with the laws of our linear motion together combined all those formulas v is equal to u plus a t v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 a s uh s is equal to u t plus half a t squared uh s is equal to u plus v over 2 times t with all these formulas combined we can be able to answer any question under this topic and also the part of angular motion, which is the circular motion. So all or everything that you know about your flywheels must be known. Uh, all, everything that you know about your angular motion from our science four must be known also. So this is the idea of the incline. When it is descending, the incline, uh, sorry, when this, this, this one is, is when it is ascending, they, they, they gave us a wrong part here. We need this one when it is ascending, this one, when it is ascending. So the first one was supposed to be ascending, then descending. So we need when it is what? Ascending. So when it is ascending, it is gonna follow that. Uh, all right, the formula was fine. TE, TE, yes, it's fine. The formula is fine, this one, but they just wrote a wrong formula there because uh, the formula is gonna be TE, which is this one that is going up, this one that I wrote here. So it's gonna be equal to FR plus FG plus FA. Then you make this one the subject. You just make whatever that you want the subject uh, of the formula. Uh, actually, so it's supposed to be a minus here. This is wrong. This is minus. All right. So they please take note of your formulas. Take note of your formulas. Okay. So this is it here. Uh, then another thing to take note is that. We are considering in our syllabus or in this course, air and wind resistance is neglected. We are not considering all those. We are just considering the three. So this is the part of our rail traction. Now, when we are talking about the locomotive, a locomotive is gonna take, is gonna maybe pull another part that we have, or it's just a locomotive on its own, or it's just a train on its own. So, the we just need maybe forces there this one is not going to change that's our attractive effort but it's now for the locomotive all right we are now talking about what rail traction remember there is rail and road we're going to have another class of the road so when you are dealing with the rail we're going to use the word locomotive all right the attractive effort of what locomotive then we're going to talk about the drawbar force uh the drawbar pull which is the drawbar pull is the force available at the rear end of the locomotive for pulling the, the, the tracks. So that is FD is equal to TE uh, minus total locomotive resistance. Gonna talk about that. So in this course, we will consider three conditions, namely the movement of the locomotive alone. So it can be just a locomotive alone. That is what you're gonna consider in this syllabus or it can be the movement of the, of the tracks or train alone, or it can be the movement of both locomotive and the tracks together. So this is your syllabus, then the symbols that they need you to know. Uh, guys, I think everything here, we talked about this. Uh, ML, so this is ML, which is the mass of the locomotive. When it is given as MT, is the mass of the train or the mass of the tracks. TE, we talked about this, the tractive effort in Newton. Uh, FD, the drawbar pull in Newton again. FR, we talked about this. FG, incline resistance. FE, we talked about this, accelerating force. Then P, local, like this, is going to be the locomotive power in kilowatts. Then R, which is the resistance or the rolling resistance in what? Newton per ton. Then we're going to have torque in Newton millimeter, EK for the kinetic energy. As we know, guys, kinetic energy is half mv squared. We talked about that from our flywheels. We had this formula. So these are the things that you just need there. As you can see, it's something that is direct if you have this, uh, this information. Then the other thing that is important, please on this one, take into consideration this part, that when the locomotive uh, applies brakes. When it applies brakes, what does it mean? It is now 
decelerating down to the rest is now going to, to rest. Whenever the brakes are being applied and it is going down the incline, the tractive effort of the locomotive is equal to the braking force. That one, please be careful. The tractive force is equal to what? To the braking force. So in actual says the tractive force is equal to the FA, uh, which is instead of being accelerating force, it will be the braking force. This, it will be an deceleration. When what? Decelerating. There is a deceleration there. So this will be of a deceleration. But now the accelerating force then becomes negative. That means our TE is going to be uh, TR total FA total FG. So remember when it is uh, going down. So this will be a negative. So we're going to have this TE. Remember, we say TE and this one, they are equal. So this is FR. FR, in this case, minus FA, minus FG. All right? So this, I think, with this information, you can be able to answer any question that you are given. With just this information alone, you can be able to answer any question. Let's consider example number one. All right. We are given here, the, a locomotive travels at 30 kilometers per hour. That is the speed that is it's traveling at. On level track and acceler and accelerates. So the first thing is on level track. And there is an acceleration with the uniform rate until it attains a speed of 90 kilometers per hour in 25 seconds. All right, remember also, I did not mention this, but you're supposed to know this. One meter per second is equal to 3,6 kilometers per hour from our engineering science N1. So if this is 3,6 kilometers per hour representing one meter per second, we can convert this to meters per second. Remember, this is our initial. It was traveling at 30 kilometers per hour. So this one to be converted to meters per second, we just have to divide by 3,6. So that will give us uh, something like 8,333 meters per second. You do the same thing to attain the speed of 90. This is the final speed. So 90 again, divide by 3,6 is this will be uh, 25. So you're going to get 25 meters per second. In how many seconds? The time given there is 25 seconds. So this one is a direct question on linear motion, this one. Neglect the rolling resistance between the wheels and the rail. Calculate the acceleration. Neglect these. So meaning to say we just work normally how we calculate our values from our linear motion when given initial velocity final, and I talked about this, guys, you're supposed to go back to your linear motion. V is equal to U plus 80. We can calculate acceleration from there by making this the subject transpose. This will be V minus U. Then we divide by this time so that we are left with A. Remember, we need the acceleration as we are told that it is what? Accelerating, all right? So that is the idea there. So the acceleration is V, the final velocity in meters per second minus the initial velocity in meters per second. Everything over what? Over the time, which is 25 seconds. So this is going to give us the acceleration. Uh, so there you're going to obtain 0 0.666 and so on. So that's 0 0.667 uh, meters per square second. So this is direct your, your science, engineering science. Okay, let's see another part. Example two, we are given uh, a locomotive is accelerating. As you can see, we are told it is accelerating on level track. It's not, this is not on an incline. It's on a level ground. So it is accelerating at what? At a speed, uh, I mean, at a given acceleration of 0 0.8 meters per square second from, from this. So that's our initial velocity. Again, divide by 3,6, you're going to get 
10 meters per second. All right. Uh, on level track, that is on a level ground. Remember our formulas, guys, our guys on a level ground. Neglect again the rolling resistance. It's not there between the wheels and the rails. Calculate one, the time required to attain a speed of 72 kilometers per hour. So if we divide this by 3,6, our final velocity it means is 20 meters per second. So the question is to calculate the time to reach this speed or to attain this speed. Guys, we are back again to our linear motion. Given the acceleration, initial and final velocity, how can we calculate time? Again, from the same formula, V is equal to U uh, plus 80. We can make to the subject transpose this, that will be V minus U over, we want a, the T, so we're gonna divide by what? By the acceleration we are left with T. So that's T as V, the final velocity which is 20 minus initially at 10 over, guys, we want the time. Yes, we want the time. So this is our acceleration, 0, 0,8. All right, so that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. We're gonna have our time as 12,5 seconds. So that is how we're supposed to simply have this, just like that. All right, just like that. So the distance now traveled in this time, in which time? In the time frame that you calculated, in this same time that you calculated, what is the distance? Who is the displacement? Like I said, these are formulas for linear motion. You can use any suitable formula, any suitable formula. This is A, is it one or B or what? It's all right. So it is me who just wrote something that of my own. This was A. All right, so we're just gonna have B here. So they need us to calculate S from the same time. So S can be calculated from different formulas. So you can use S, like I said, is equal to UT plus half AT squared. We have got everything. We can take it from V squared is equal to U squared plus two AS. There are so many formulas to use, but I always bring this one. I love this formula S, it's a direct formula U plus V average velocity times time, just like this, you are done. We have the U, we have the V, we have got the two. Okay, the two is just a constant. We have the time, we calculate the time. Unless that, if this time is wrong, therefore it means it's gonna affect you. So it's up to you there. You can use the original formula, you can use other formulas, or you can use this one. So that's S, the displacement is gonna be U, which is 10 plus V, the final velocity of 20 over two times the time. We say the time there is what is 12,5. So that's it, that's it. So this is going to give us S just like that. So this is going to give us 187,5 in meters, just like that. So you can use any, any, any suitable formula, any suitable formula. All right, this is what they are saying here. They are saying if the locomotive is now decelerated uniformly until it comes to rest after traveling a further 185,7 meters, calculate the deceleration. This is just back to our, our, our this, is, this is normal, linear. We are back to our linear formulas. But I want us to understand something here. All right, the object, it just consider like an object. It was just moving, going up. Then all of a sudden, it is now decelerating. What does it mean? At this point where it ended, you are starting from there, going down. So this point is the final velocity, yes. But it is the initial velocity when it is now going down. Guys, I hope you understand me here. I hope you understand me here. So what they are trying to say here on C is that the final velocity, this one, remember it, 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 it was at 72 kilometers per hour now. That is where it was. It was now at 72, which we converted to meters per second and it was 20 meters per second. This was your final velocity. But they are saying, no, you are not going to end, they go down, accelerate. So it is going to start at this velocity, which is, it is going to be our initial velocity until it comes to rest, meaning I say our final velocity will be zero meters per second. 
In this, in this displacement, the distance covered 187.5 meters. What is going to be the deceleration? As we know that deceleration is simply a negative acceleration. So we are now having another information to consider. This one is no longer valid. This is the only information that we are now having this. U, V, S, and you're asked to calculate A. How can we calculate A from this information, guys? This is just linear motion. As we are used it to from our signs, as it is. V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS is the best formula there. We can play around, transpose this. It's going to be V squared minus U squared is equal to 2AS. Since we need A, we're going to divide by 2S. So you're going to remove this 2S both sides, remove this by 2S, going to divide this. We are left with what? The acceleration. But obtaining a negative means this is deceleration, and that is what is supposed to happen. So the final velocity, that's zero squared minus u, which is 20 squared, everything over two times s, 187,5. Just like that, you are done. Just like that, you're done. So this is going to give us a negative value, negative 1,06, 6, 6 like that, which is 6, 7 meters per square second. So the negative that we're obtaining is to show that this is truly a deceleration. So you read to understand the question. You are supposed to understand if that is from where it was, it is now going down. It is now decelerating. It was accelerating in the first place. Yes, it's true. Very true. But this one is another statement. Are you considering that? It's another statement. You have to consider that. It's another statement. All right, example number three, we are given a same consideration, a locomotive, it was a truck that is taking up, it is moving with the truck. All right, but this one, how is it moving? Exerted state at a pull bar, neglect this and that. All right, so this is just like on a normal ground. On a normal ground. So it is moving at a speed of, and we are not taught anything about the other speed. So this is the speed that you're given, the velocity. So we are given the velocity of 72 kilometers per hour. As we saw, guys, previously, we divided this by 3,6. It gave us 20, this one. We worked same values. All right, so exacting a steady pull of one kilonewton on the drawbar. So this is the force that we have on the drawbar, which is one kilonewton, the pull. Neglect the rolling resistance. Calculate or determine the work done in 25 minutes. If the time is 25 minutes, what is going to be the work done? That is the first question that you're given there to calculate the work done. As we know, that work done is simply force times distance. So we have velocity, we have time, we have got the force because remember, the, the, the rolling resistance is neglected. So this force is going to be our FD. But where are we going to have the, the S? All right, we are just given the velocity that is it is moving at, like an average velocity. It is at that velocity within the same time. So it's just velocity and time. So you can calculate the distance there, which is velocity times what? Times time. Remember that S can be calculated from what? Distance times time. So we can calculate S, I mean, from velocity times time. So that is S, the velocity. Uh, in meters per second, 20 times the time in seconds. This is 25 minutes. So in minutes, in seconds, you're going to multiply by 60. That's we've got a displacement of 30,000 meters. So this is 30,000 meters. So force times distance is the work done. So that means your work done is going to be the force, which is the draw bar pull of one kilonewton. That is 1,000 newton multiply it to the distance which you're given as 30,000. So if you multiply this, that will be 30 million. And 30 million joules simply means 30 megajoules. If you divide by 1 million, or if you multiply by 10 to the exponent of negative 6. Just like that. Then the other part, they need us to calculate the power in the same time of 25 minutes. What is the time? What is the power? Guys, we know that power is simply work done over what? Work done over time. 
We calculated the work done, isn't it? We calculated this. 30 megajoules, that is 10 to the exponent of 6, over the time. The time is 25, uh, 25 minutes. But the time is supposed to be in seconds. So you have to multiply by, by 60 to convert this to, to seconds. So that's we've got the power in kilowatts. All right, power in watts from this part. So that was going to give us 20,000 watts, which is simply 20 kilowatt. Just like that. Just like that. Or we can use power is equivalent to the what? To the force times velocity. Force times velocity. So it's going to be the dropper pull because that is the only force that we have times the velocity. Still, you're going to have the same answer. But provided that this is in meters per second, your velocity. So you are going to have the same answer. All right. So these are the questions. Question number four, again, we are given another part of a locomotive in this case. And here they are saying a locomotive has got a, a mass of 60 ton. So we are given a mass of 60 ton, 70% of which is supported by the driving wheels. 70% of what? Of the mass. 70% of mass is on what? On driving wheels. Is on driving wheels. 70% is on driving wheels. The tractive resistance, 100 newton per, per ton. That is our R there. 100 newton per ton. Remember, we said our, our R is given. Or you can just write as FR. The locomotive's mass and the coefficient of adhesion friction between the wheels and rails are is. All right. Mass and coefficient. This is the coefficient of friction. All right. Then the locomotive travels at a constant speed, at a constant speed. It is traveling at a constant speed. So you just take it as your V, just V velocity. There is no U, there is no, there is no this thing. So V at 40 kilometers per hour divided by 3,6. Remember, that will be 11,111 like that, meters per second. So the first question was to calculate the locomotive's tractive effort, which is the locomotive uh, tractive effort, which is TE. So how are we going to have our tractive effort in this case? Remember, this is uh, just given on a level ground. It's not going up. It's not what. All right. So this is it. We are given that 70% was given as a, as a mass which was given to the wheels. So it follows that your tractive uh, force in that case is going to be given by this formula. The mass of the locomotive. Remember, we have the mass of the locomotive times the gravitational acceleration, the coefficient of friction, times the percentage that you are given of mass on what? This percentage of mass on wheels. So this is it on driving wheels. With this, we can be able to calculate our TE. I think everything is there, ML. Uh, the mass of the locomotive in uh, in kilograms. So this is supposed to be in kilograms. So it's going to be 60,000 multiplied by 1,000. Gravitational acceleration, 9,81. The coefficient of friction, uh, 0, 0,28. Times the percentage of the drive you are given that it's 70% of the mass. 70% of what? Of the mass. So that is the percentage. It's 0, 0,7. So that's our TE is going to be 1153.65,6 1, Newton. Then to kilo Newton, you can divide by 1,000. That will be 115,366 in a kilo Newton. That's our TE, just like that. So guys, we need to understand, work with more questions. I just hope you, you get up. Uh, but we shall revise more question papers as we move on. We just hope time will allow. Then there's this question that they are asking us to calculate the uh, power developed by the locomotive if the transmission efficiency is. 
all right whenever you are given the transmission efficiency and you have got uh, the tractive uh, for the tractive effort and velocity this is the formula that you're going to use to calculate the power i want you to have this it follows that power is equal to the tractive effort so it is the tractive effort times the velocity in meters per second everything over that efficiency transmission efficiency So even if you are dealing with uh, a road traction times what? Uh, transmission efficiency. Just like that. Just because we have got the tractive effort here, we calculated this is our tractive effort, remember? So the moment that we use this in kilonewton, it means we're gonna have our power in kilowatt. So power, uh, let's just write P, is equal to the tractive effort, which is TE, so it's gonna be TE times the velocity over what? The efficiency. So that's it, our TE 115,366 times the velocity. We have, it's a constant velocity, does not change this one. Over the efficiency that we're given, 75% transmission, that's 0 0.75, just like that. So like I said, if you use this in kilowatt, it means the P for the locomotive is going to be equal in what? In kilowatt. Okay? Just like that. So this is 1,000. Uh, seven hundred nine comma one zero nine uh comma one zero nine uh kilowatt. So you just need to understand how questions are given. That's the idea. All right. Then the other part they are saying here the acceleration required to accelerate uh this. To, to accelerate the locomotive from what? From 40. All right, remember it was traveling at a constant speed of 40, it was constant. Now they want us to accelerate it. In order for us to have this acceleration, we must consider where our acceleration is taken from, from what? From the accelerating force. That is the only part because the accelerating force is mass of the locomotive times what? The acceleration. We have the mass of the locomotive, the accelerating force we do not have so that we can calculate what that acceleration. So we need FA first. From where? From where? All right, remember what we talked about when this is given, when this is given on a level ground, that on a level ground, TE is equal to uh, the accelerating force, once the accelerating force is considered, you add the rolling resistance. So as we need this, so you're going to transpose this to the other side, that's TE minus FR, all right? Minus FR is equal to FA, where FA is equal to MA. So we can calculate this if we have this and also have this. But we have this because it's the mass times what? Times the, the resistance, which is the Newton per what? The, the turn per, 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 the Newton per turn, this one. So that means we can be able to calculate FR first, which is mass times the Newton per turn. The mass is 60 tons times the Newton per turn, the Newton per turn, which is our R, the resistance, 100 uh, Newton per, per turn. If it is multiplying to this in turn, it will cancel definitely our answer will be in what? In Newton. So this will be 6,000 uh, 6, Newton, which is equal to 6 kilonewton. That's our FR. So we can calculate FA because from this, I'm saying that FA is equal to TE in kilonewton. We have got our TE there, 115,366 minus uh, FA minus FR, our uh, FR we got here in kilonewton, six kilo. If you use kilonewton here, 
also use kilonewton there. All right? So this is what we have. We're going to have our accelerating force and our accelerating force being 103, uh, 109,366 in kilonewton. It can help us to calculate what? To calculate our acceleration, the one that is required to accelerate the body up. As we know that acceleration, if we divide by the mass, is going to be Fa over ML, the mass of the locomotive. That is Fa, the accelerating force that we calculated right now. Remember, we calculated this. So we're just going to substitute 109.366. The mass of the locomotive in tons, but we have to convert it to kilograms because we are given this in tons, 60 tons to kilograms, multiply by 1,000, that's 60 thousand so we have the acceleration there and that was gonna give us all right so if you consider this you wrote this in tons you must also give this it was kilo kilo newton so you're gonna have times 10 to the exponent of three there's kilo newton there so this will give us one comma eight two three to three decimal places uh remember acceleration meters per what meters per square second just like that, we have uh, your acceleration. So, guys, uh, I don't know. Now, I don't know. We just need to work with more questions. All right. Another question again. The attractive effort required for a locomotive with a mass of, we are given the mass again, 50 ton in this case, to travel on a level track at a constant speed of uh, at a constant speed, at a constant speed is, all right, so they're saying the tractive force is, so we are given the tractive force of 110 kilonewton, the rolling resistance to motion is, we are given also that 100 newton per ton, and also of the locomotive mass, calculate the acceleration available. Ah, guys, we talked about this. We talked about this. As long it is on level ground, one, it is on level ground. And there is an acceleration. How do you calculate this? We said you're going to need from FA. This is the same here. FA, it's not going to change. This one. FA is equal to what? TE minus FR. The tractive effort minus the rolling. So that's our FA. So we have TE, we have FR. From where? The mass and the newton per meter. So then we're just going to calculate Fa is equal to T, which is 110,000 uh, minus Fr. We said Fr is mass times what? Mass times resistance, which is 50 times the resistance of 100 Newton per meter. So this is going to give us the accelerating force that we need to, to use to calculate what? To calculate uh, the acceleration because with this, we can be able now to calculate the acceleration. Okay, sorry for that. We can be able to calculate our acceleration. So that's our FA was going to be 1,005, uh, 105,000, so 105,000 Newton. Because we said FA is equal to the product of the mass of the locomotive. You are dealing with the locomotive. So it's the mass of the locomotive times what? Times acceleration. Since we need this, we're going to divide by what? The mass of the locomotive cosine. So our acceleration is the force applied, uh, the force uh, accelerating force, sorry. Our accelerating force over the mass of what? The mass of the locomotive. Are we having, yes, we're given 50 ton in kilograms is what? That's 50,000 kilograms. So we have the acceleration. And this was going to give us 2,1 meters per square second. That's we have calculated our acceleration. So these are the typical questions that you're going to have in your uh, final examinations. We're going to have another class where we shall talk about uh, uh, the road traction. Then from there, we shall be talking about question papers. As uh, I promised, we shall work with question papers, if possible, full papers, full papers.